Hey everybody, welcome to my video on small closed economies. This is a model that I used early in my intermediate macroeconomics classes. And in this model, uh, it's really simplified. Almost everything is treated as exogenous. Uh, to scroll down this long list of exogenous variables, there's fixed level of capital, K bar, there's a fixed level of labor, L bar. There's a production function, which for today I just made be Cobb Douglas, but I could make it be any function I wanted to, where Y is a function of K and L, but since K and L are fixed, Y is also fixed. Government spending is fixed at G bar, taxes are fixed at T bar, there's an MPC that doesn't change. So consumption, we will make, I mean it's a function of unchanging MPC, unchanging Y bar, and unchanging T bar. So C is also fixed at some C bar. And we can break up private savings, public savings, national savings, and they've all got their equations there too. The only endogenous variable in our model is R. And that is given by the investment function I of R. Now, this is a very straightforward model, although there's a lot of equations. Uh, pretty much everything is fixed in advance, and so solving it is very mechanical and very repetitive. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve an example of this model and to solve for the interest rate, and then show you what happens if I change something in this model. So let's get started. Let's assume we have 200 units of capital, 200 units of labor, and because of that, you plug that into our production function, 200 to the 1 half times 200 to the 1 half, is 200. We've got 200 units of output or income. Uh, government spends 100 bucks or whatever money. Taxes are also 100, so the government has a balanced budget by the way, because taxes equals government spending. Our MPC is constant at 0.75, which means consumption is 0.75 times 200 minus 100. That's disposable income in those parentheses. Y bar minus T bar is how much income you have left over after taxes. So 0 0.75 times 100 is 75. Private savings then is income minus taxes minus consumption is 25. Public savings are taxes minus government spending is zero. National savings are income minus consumption minus government are 25. All right, so what did I do here? Honestly, I just had to remember what all of these equations were and all of these relationships. None of the math is very hard, but keeping it all straight can be challenging for some students. Uh, now let's go a little farther. Let's explore our investment category. Let's give ourselves an investment function 1000 over R. Yeah, let's draw a little loanable funds market, savings and investment on the horizontal axis, real interest rates on that axis. There's our investment function. Here is our fixed level of savings of 25. That's national savings right there. And we will find the interest rate where those two things intersect by setting them equal to each other. So 1,000 over R equals 25. The interest rate is 40%. That's relatively higher than we're used to here in the States, but that's okay. I made this up. All right. You just went through the whole model. It's all exogenous, or mostly exogenous, and so it solves pretty easy. But what happens if something changes? For instance, what if the government decided to raise taxes? Okay, our model can't account for the tax change, but if a question I ask you on a test just says, hey, taxes change, how do you treat your model after that happens? If there's just some exogenous shock to the model, well, let's see, the stuff before that never changed. We still have 200 capital, 200 labor, 200 output, 100 government spending. That stuff's all the same. MPC is still the same. Consumption is different, though, because now we've taken different taxes from someone. 0.75 times 200 minus 160 comes out to just be 30 bucks. Uh, private savings also changes because of the way taxes play into it. It's going to be 200 minus 160 minus 30 is 10 bucks. Uh, public savings, that changes because it's taxes minus government. There's now $60 of public savings. And national savings comes out to be 70. 
Okay. Uh, we can go along down here. Uh, if I wanted to solve for the interest rate, 1,000 over R equals 70. Solve for R, you'll get R is about 14.286. So here, if we get higher savings on our graph, it will lead to lower interest rates. All right, last one, just for good measure, you guys. What if we change something at the top? What if we suddenly get a lot more capital in our economy? Capital is now 450 instead of 200. Now what happens? Labor is still unchanged. But oh man, our production function is going to change. Our income is now 400 to the one half times, sorry, 450 to the one half times 200 to the one half comes out to 300. So our income changes. So pretty much everything else that has income in it is going to have to change also. Government spending stays the same. Taxes stay the same. MPC stays the same. But consumption has more income. So we put a 300 where the 200 is, and you get 105. Savings is going to change also, private savings. Public savings won't change because the government hasn't changed its budget, but national savings will also change. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then our interest rate, let's see, 1,000 over R equals 95. R equals 10.5-ish. So I know this is brief. I know I kind of skipped a lot of little algebra steps, but I really just wanted to show you that in these simple, small, closed economy models where everything's exogenous, solving it's always going to be the same few steps. You're always going to be trying to remember all of these relationships. And if you can, then just going through one at a time working your way down the list is all you got to do and then later when your teacher messes with you and starts changing stuff what do you do you just work your way down the list again but the steps are always the same so it's a little intimidating when you first see it but once you've practiced it a couple times it's pretty repetitive and easy so I don't know if that helps you guys, but I hope it does. But if not, too bad. Good luck, and thanks for watching.